Dear students, I am very happy to understand that many of you are using my uh, video lectures. Moreover, I have learned that uh, many students beyond the boundary of JSS are also using and that give me uh, additional pleasure. Now in uh, making this PPT, my daughter Avni has helped me a lot. Hello. And uh, thank you Avni. Well. Right? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. So now in this lecture, I'm going to deal with the following two points basically. Firstly is about the torsional pendulum and secondly it is to calculate the couple per unit twist for the torsional pendulum. So let's start. Torsional pendulum consists of an object suspended from a fixed support with, with an unextensible wire so you can see some uh, something it is like this this will be a support from this you have a wire and from here you have suspended an object and this object is to be twisted by a certain angle so if this is going to do to and fro motion to and fro motion on both the side then it will it will be called a torsional pendulum so naturally as we know it is going to give the to and fro motion so therefore we can have the time period of this uh, pendulum as well. So let's find out what will be the time period. So what we can say time period of a torsional pendulum will be the time taken, time taken by the pendulum to complete one to and fro turning, turning from the fixed point or from the axis of the rotation. So that will be the time period all right so time period here it is given by t equal to 2 pi root under i by c how how we have calculated this time period so again here also we have applied the hooks law that you know f equal to minus k into x and then you apply the newton's second law f equal to ma so in the rotational motion the mass plays the same role as we have a moment of inertia that is in the rotational motion we have the mo moment of inertia and in the linear motion you have the mass both of them are the same thing so just by equating them we have calculated their time time period you don't require to calculate this so what we can say the time period will be given as t equal to 2 pi root under i by c so this will be the time period of a torsional pendulum where of course what i'm what i'm saying over here i i is the moment of inertia here this i that i have taken this is the moment of inertia of the body about the axis of the wire and c here this c is couple per unit twist so this value of the c we have to calculate in this lecture so let us see how i'm going to calculate this value of c so let's uh, move further let us suppose this is your torsional pendulum so this is the one cross-sectional area that have been shown so what i have done is i have taken the top cross-sectional area of this so what i am saying this wire of course as i explain you it is made of the wire like the wire like this so this is the cylindrical wire like this so what we can say this cylindrical wire is made of many smaller very very thin thin cylinders so one cylinder will be this another that is we can say this is one of the cylinder similarly the another cylinder can be this like this so what we can we are saying we have the n number of the cylinders with which it is made of all right so this pendulum is made of n number of cylinders all right like this what i have done is here i have taken one particular cross section that is one small section of this uh, wire that i have shown you that i have taken so let us suppose the radius of this because it is made of many many uh, cylindrical shape like this so what i have done we have taken a small section of this that is we have taken one a small cylinder this is a part of larger part of the cylinders all right here i have taken this the top portion this is the top portion so what i am saying the radius of the cylinder is your capital r now what i have done is here i have taken a small cross sectional area so this is the small cross sectional area that i have taken so this has the radius small r and this is the thickness this is the thickness so we are saying the thickness here is in is dr all right so i hope you have understood this 
So let's move further. So what we are saying, this is what I have written here. Consider a, a cylinder of radius capital R. This is the radius capital R that, that we have taken and length is capital L. This is the length that we have taken. So length is capital L, which is fixed at one point. So this is fixed like this. From here, it is suspended, right? It is suspended from one point. And other point, this is this is the other, other part. This part is free to move. So what you can do, you can twist this. So what you can do, you can twist like this on the uh, anti-clockwise or you can twist in the clockwise direction. So in any direction, you can twist at a very small angle. All right, so this uh, suspended end is being twisted. So then what is happening? The wire is imagined to be made of the large number of the concentric hollow cylinder. So this is the one part of your cylinder. So this in this way we have the n number of the cylinders, which is the part of which is the part of your uh, pendulum, torsional pendulums, right? Let us suppose the thickness of each of them. This is the thickness that we have taken. So thickness of each cross section is dr. So this is what we have considered over here. Let the line. So what we are going to do? So we are going to twist this. So let us suppose we are going to twist in the clockwise direction. So this is your AB, this is your AB. So if you are going to twist this, so this B will come to a new position. And therefore I'm saying this B has come to the new position B dash. So this B here, this B has come to the position of B dash. So naturally here, this has got twisted. So this is the angle by which the end of this has got twisted, right? So what is this angle? This angle, let us suppose, is the phi. Phi is the angle which is being made at the axis uh, with respect to OO dash. So now you see the triangle. We are getting a triangle that is B. This is your B. This is your O. This is your O and B dash. So naturally, this angle phi is very small. So if this angle phi is very small, so angle can be given as arc. So what will this arc? Arc will be equal to your B, B dash upon radius. This is your small r. This is the radius that we have taken. So let's calculate what is the value by which it is getting twisted. So this is the phi. This is what the angle we have taken. The angle is the phi by which it has got twisted. So as I have explained you, that can be given as phi equal to B, B dash into r. So this is the, so what we have done, so B, B dash, of course, will be equal to how much? Phi into R. That is, phi is equal to how much? B, B dash upon R, R upon area. So B, B dash equal to phi into R. So this I am saying as this is your equation number one. Now, again, what I am going to do is, as you can see, here this end has got twisted. So in, in the similar way, what we can see, when this wire is coming from A to new position B, this wire has here also, this has also got twisted. This has also got twisted at the top surface. So let us suppose this angle of the twisting is theta. So here again, we are getting another one triangle, A, B, and B dash. So what will be the angle of the twist? So the angle of the twist is theta. So again, we can say the theta will equal to B, B dash upon radius. What is the radius? Radius is this capital L. This is the length. So this is your radius capital L. So in the similar way, again, let us calculate what is the B, B dash that is the twisting with respect to A, that is with respect to this axis. So what we, let's see. <clears throat> so what we can say. So here in this case, again, this is the angle, angle theta that we have taken. It has got twisted in, and it has got the to the new position B, B dash. So B, B dash, we can say, L into theta. So in the previous lecture, in the previous slide, I had calculated here with respect to phi, this value of BB dash. And here I, again, I have calculated this value of the theta, right? Uh, in terms of the theta, the value of BB dash. So naturally, this BB dash in both the cases are the same. So what we can do? We can equate this two. So this is what we have done. So BB dash, both sides are same. So what we can say? Phi r is equal to L into theta. Okay, I hope you have understood this. Therefore, now what we know, the, what is the shear? So this, this has got sheared by the angle of theta. So what we can do? 
I can find out what is the value of the shear from here. So what will be the value of the theta? So just we can rearrange and this is the value of the theta. Theta is equal to phi r upon L. So just I have rearranged this. So this is the value of uh, the shear strain we have calculated. All right. So let's uh, move further. So then what will be the strain? So strain is equal to radius rigidity modulus into shearing strain. So this is going to be shearing stress. Shearing stress is equal to modulus of rigidity into shearing strain. So modulus of rigidity, since here it is your, it is your twisting, so it is getting twisted. So here we are calling the modulus of rigidity is equal to nita and shearing strain we have calculated over here. This is a shearing strain that we have calculated phi r upon l. So that value we have substituted over here. This is the value that has been substituted over here. So this is your, this in this way we have calculated what is the value of shearing stress. Now if we have calculated the value of the shearing stress, so what we can do? We can find out what is the force that is acting per unit cross-sectional area of this. Let us suppose A be the cross-sectional area of this uh, hollow cylinder, then shearing force acting on them will be equal to shearing stress into cross-sectional area. Because what is the stress? Stress is equal to force per unit area. So force will equal to how much? Shearing stress into the area of cross section. So what we have done? Area of cross section we have taken is A is the area of cross section, right? Shearing stress we have calculated here. This is the value of shearing stress that we have calculated. So what we can do? Just we can multiply these two, right? And let us multiply this and let us see what we are getting. So this is the value of we have got the shearing stress. So this is the value of the shearing stress we are getting. And then I have multiplied this by the cross-sectional area A that we have taken over here. This is the cross-sectional area we have taken. So this is the value that we are getting for the force, right? So this is the shearing force that is acting on this. All right. Now, area over which the force acts. So what is the area on which the force is acting? So that is also the, uh, we have to see. So what we can say? the area will equal to your circumference into the thickness. What is the area? Circumference into the thickness. What will be the circumference? So circumference over here is equal to your 2 pi r. If the r is the radius, so what is the circumference? Circumference is 2 pi r. And with this, we, we have what we have done? We have multiplied with the thickness dr. So circumference has been multiplied with the thickness dr and therefore you have got the total force acting on this. all right <clears throat> so shearing force therefore acting on this equal to what we can say just we have substituted all those value so nita r phi upon l 2 pi r into dr this is the value of shearing force which is acting on this cylinder okay now we have already seen moment of the force this is the moment of the force acting on the wire in the direction of O O dash is known as force into perpendicular distance. So moment of the force is force into perpendicular distance. So force, the value of the force we have already calculated. What is the value of the force that we have calculated? This is the value of the force that we have calculated. This is the value of the force that we have calculated, right? And then if I'm going to multiply with the distance, what is the distance? R is the distance. So what will be, what will be your Total force that is at moment of the force. So force into the distance. So this is the value of the force that we have calculated. Here is the force. And with that force, we have multiplied with R. So this is your moment of the force. This equation we are getting moment of the force here. This is the moment of the force. So moment of force is equal to nita phi upon L 2 pi R cube into dr. This is your moment of the force. So what is the total moment of the force? So naturally the radius of the cylinder was your capital R was the radius of the cylinder. So if I am going to integrate this equation, this equation from 0 to capital R, 0 to capital R, we will be getting what is the total moment of the force which is acting on this. So this is what we have done. We have integrated this from 0 to capital R and this is the moment of the force that we have taken inside. Whatever is the constant, take those terms out of this integral, right? 
and integ uh, integrate this. So what are the constant? Neta is constant, right? Phi is constant, L is constant. So what is the variable is your small r and dr. This is your variable. So this small r and d are your variable. This is your variable. So if I integrate this, this will become r to the power 4. This will become r to the power 4. Of course, small r, r to the power 4 upon 4. Right. So this is what we have re rearrange this and then I have substituted the limit upper limit minus lower limit. Right. So what we are getting here we are getting the expression is equal to n pi phi r to the power 4 upon 2l. All right. So this is force acting. Now, couple per unit twist is given by couple acting on the wire, couple acting on the wire upon angle of the twist. Now, angle of the twist you have already calculated. So, that is your phi. So, this value just you have calculated, couple acting on the wire, that is nothing, that's the moment of the force. This you have already calculated, right? If I am going to divide this by phi, if I am going to divide this phi, then what we are getting? couple per unit twist this is the couple per unit twist so couple acting on the wire that is the that is nothing moment of the force couple acting on the wire is what total moment of the force upon the angle of twisting so i have divided this by angle of the twisting which is phi so what we have got we have got the capital c so therefore c is equal to n pi r to power 4 upon 12 just i have rearranged whatever is was the was to be cancelled has been cancelled. So this is your couple per unit twist for a cylinder. Thank you very much and in this way we have finished the unit 2 mod module 2 and from the next class we will have the electromagnetic wave equation. Thank you very much for your presence and I hope all of you are keeping yourself safe. Uh, stay at your home. Uh, do everything as per the WHO guidelines and stay healthy. Thank you very much.